This is the game that got me into history. Genghis Khan by Koi. Came out for Nintendo in 1989. My uncle showed me this game. I think I was about 11. Uh, and I just was really curious about it. So I started asking all kinds of questions. And he had some knowledge of these different guys. And then I went on to learn more about some of these guys, especially Genghis. Uh, it did take some liberties in this game. It starts in 1206 when Mongolia gets unified. Richard. The Lionheart was already dead by then, but they kept him for the game. I think Alexios here was not the emperor in Constantinople. This was just after the Fourth Crusade. I think he'd been deposed for a while there. And admittedly, I don't know much about Yoritomo Shogun, I'm guessing. Let's check out Richard. I'm gonna set the parameters automatically, yes. And then give me random results to choose from. <laughs> yeah, in this game, you're trying to have a good economy. What did I do again? Oh, there we go. Uh, you're trying to build your military strength up and you're you're taking over the land. It's all it's all RNG, really. But like you see these points here, you lose a few points for some actions in whatever category it applies to, and then you've got to train yourself repeatedly in the game. And that's something that that's something that happens a lot throughout this game. You're just training yourself. Once you get down to a certain level, you can't perform actions. So here's the map. We're in number seven in the top left there. It's England. So the way I tend to play this game is I try to just keep my keep as few borders as possible with other countries because you can't you can't um, you can't go through countries to get to other countries. So you have to have a border up against them to invade them. So if you, like for right now, for example, the best bet for me is to take number eight because I'll have the same amount of borders. So I'll have a border with nine and a border with 20. So that's always the first move as England for me. And then the next move is to take 20 because then you still have the same amount of borders because your borders would be then nine and two. So you got three countries but still only two borders and then from there you got to kind of decide what to do next if you go to nine then you'll have three borders borders with six ten and twenty one if you go to ten you'll have what you couldn't well, you'd have to take nine or twenty one which twenty one would get you one two more borders so really, it's, it's up to you. The re better resources are through Africa. So I tend to go that route and I'll try to work my way up to three. So I'll take like eight, 20, 21, 22, 12, three. And then I'll have the choice to finish Europe or to start taking countries in Asia. Okay, anyway. This is the basic screen you work off of. So the numbers can only go up to 999 for the gold, the food, and the troops. Uh, the, the people in that pink section, the town, the masons, the food, and the artisans, those count as troops as well. It's like a total number of people working for the government is troops plus all the numbers in those, in those pink categories. And then at the bottom there is your, your morale is your army morale. Your economy kind of speaks for itself, defense, arms, and skill. Um, so those numbers, I think, all, all go up to 999 as well, but I don't think I've ever seen any of them get that high. Like maybe in the four and five hundreds, if you're real lucky, you do a good job. So like the, the town in the pink categories, it corresponds with like the town and the artisans correspond with the economy. I think the food as well. And then the masons correspond with the defense. And then you train your troops to get skill and you can buy arm armaments in the market. And so 
speaking of the market, a, a huge portion of this game is in the market. See where it says I have items under my picture. That's my item that my artisans produce for me. Every fall, I'll get a certain amount of them, depending on how many artisans I have. And then the food comes in in the fall season as well. So right now, I'm going to have some other stuff. Like I have all this stuff probably right now. But every fall, I'll only get these and this. I'll show you what I mean in my, I can view my stock. Oops. Uh, these are my children, Arthur, Eleanor, Henry, and Edward. Here's my stock. Yes, yeah, so I've got a little bit of everything. So what's what happens always is you end up finding good prices for the stuff that you don't reproduce yourself and you sell it off. And then just like every fall, you're coming off of your main item and you might come off with some food if you can. And you're just trying to build gold to buy troops and you're training troops. And that's that's just continuously happening. And in the process of doing so, you're using judgment. Every every action you take in the market, you use five judgment. When you train troops, you use leadership. So those, you're going to be training those all an awful lot while you're building up your power base. So that's pretty much the gist of the game. So I'll, I'll perform some actions. It's, uh, and this happens a lot too, where the merchants are unavailable. And right, we got a better price on our main item here. Let's sell these. And you can see in the very bottom, where it says rate at 91, that is the market rate. It's 91 is more of a buying rate if you're desperate for troops. It's definitely not a selling rate. But, <clears throat> and that's for your main items that, like buying, uh, you, can, you can buy stuff like this. You can buy these items too. And here's where the arms are. But you never really do that. You might buy food if you get an emergency. But I got 622 gold right now. I'm going to hire some troops just to show you. So I'm going to hire 40. Oh, I like round numbers. Let's hire 44. Let's leave us 150. And our gold went down to 120. So we've done two actions in the market. And we're down to 91 judgment. We were at 101. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. And now we'll, we'll train our troops one time. And we'll, put, we'll go down to 128 leadership. But we won't get to see it until our next turn. Now it's going to go to the summer season. As you can see in the left in the top there. You get three turns per season in a place that you have. Um, in a place that's your home country. That you have direct control over. You have direct control over uh, any country that isn't your home country, and you only get one turn for that one. So it's best to station people loyal to you in those places so they can maximize the countries. Uh, but yeah, so we'll be at 128 leadership, as you see there. So we'll just keep on repeating that kind of process. We want our troop skill to be like at least over 300. And we want to have a whole bunch of troops. So one thing I'll show you right now real quick, and then I'll end this recording. Here's, here's the army breakdown percentage. So you have you get it to build up 100 percent and you can have really all you can fill all 10 of these if you want. I usually use four. I'm just going to leave this so I don't use an order. And I'm going to go to the labor distribution. And this is where so I have 214 total in between all these and so I, I could put them all in my troops and have over 200 troops or I could round these out a little better to help my economy that's what I want to do so I'm going to go to 20 for town I don't think anybody's going to invade me so I'm not going to put anything in there I'll go to uh, take this down to 40 actually and I'll make this 19 there we go. You know what? I'll go ahead and make this 10. There. So that should do us pretty good.
we still got enough troops to defend for right now, and we've got some work going in on our economy and defense. So yes, this distribution's all right. I've used an order, it'll change to two. Now I got two more orders. Typically you're gonna look, see if you can sell anything here. Can't really afford to sell food, so we'd be getting into our other items. I know the rates on these well, so that's not good. We sold our lot that we had for 5.4 gold per unit. Um, this is a halfway decent price on this. I'm gonna sell it because we need to. We should have. We should always try to have more gold than men, if possible. So troops really is a good measurement. I, mean, I think you have to pay everyone. And that happens in January at the same time as you get taxes. So if your economy is low, you have a lot of men, and you don't have a lot of gold, you'll start cannibalizing men, and your gold will just stay at zero. That's it's really difficult to manage when it comes down to that in this game. It's a really hard game. I've only beat this game one time, and it was because I could have multiple save files because I was playing it on a computer. But when you have it on the, on the Nintendo with the way those cartridges were and all that stuff, and you only get one save file on top of that, if you mess up or some, something catastrophic can happen to you in this game, even if you're really powerful and it can just destroy your whole thing. It, this is a long time consuming game. So that's, this is one of my favorite games of all time though. I've played this game more than almost any other game ever. And I still like to pick it up and play it once in a while. I don't know if I'll go through with beating it all the way again, but definitely always fun to to play. And I'll maybe I'll do some more videos on some of the old history type games that influenced me. It would end up being almost exclusively koi games, but there's a couple others, um, and a couple of PC games. So well, that's it. I hope everybody enjoyed. See you later.